Al, so I want to continue this discussion about these these other assets. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. everybody loves stocks, and 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 I want people to continue to love stocks because they're a great asset. Okay, then utilize the options market to maximize your efficiency of your capital. But also, you can still trade the stock market with the with the uh, with the futures Futures. market. Mm -hmm. You have the major indexes, the S and P five hundred, the Dow, the Nasdaq. So you can still participate, but it's just being more capital efficient, and that's what it's all about in in our everyday life, maximizing each dollar that you have. But you have to really understand how the market actually works. How does the stock market go up? How does the stock market go down? What drives price? Who is driving that? Because we know the the institutions control about 90% of the money in the market. Right. Okay, who's always making money? The institutions are always making money. They're, they're always capitalizing on the novice investor, which mm-hmm. is the public. So we, what do we want to do? Trade like them. And our, our, our sponsor, Online Trading Academy, has a core strategy that's designed to teach you to make those better investing decisions, and it's based off of supply and demand, which is how anything moves in price, anything in life. Talk about supply and demand, what that really consists of, and some of the tools that that um, Online Trading Academy, our sponsor, likes to utilize when making decisions in the market. Well, the, the relationship between supply and demand in the markets and buyers and sellers, so that relationship between buyers and sellers is really the key thing. That's the important thing to concentrate on to decide or determine when the price is going to either change directions or continue going in a certain direction, uh, maybe the beginning of a trend, the end of a trend, because the, the facts are, and this really is something that's that you can't argue, when there are more buyers than sellers, the price of anything is going to go up. When there are more sellers than buyers, the price is going to go down. So it's that relationship. When you have a balance of buyers and sellers, not much is going to happen with price. But all of a sudden, if you have a, a huge buyer that comes in that changes that relationship and causes an, causes an imbalance between the buyers and the sellers, price is going to go up. What happens? How does that happen? Is that you and me putting our money together, Josh, and buying shares of something? Eh. Unfortunately, no. But it's companies like Goldman Sachs or, or people like, like uh, Warren Buffett. I used that example before where he wanted to buy $10 billion worth of IBM, 64 million shares. With the, the the way the markets function is that as soon as that relationship between buyers and sellers changes, as soon as there are more buyers and the price starts moving up, that causes more of an imbalance. More people then jump in and start moving the price up. What the institutions want to do, and this is one of the edges that they have, they're utilizing tools that require maybe tens of millions of dollars to to utilize that's some of the and they in exchange for that they're getting data and they're getting research that we don't get or we get it too late to do anything so they start out by knowing what the true value of something is and they know what they want to pay for it and what they're not willing to go above to take a position which means that they might have to do their full position in increments they do some now some down the road a little bit more down the road. Those are things that we can take advantage of. Our core strategy was built around that concept and put together by people that actually worked in Wall Street, worked on the floors, and and saw the impact of order flow. When there are unfilled orders that come into the market or unfilled orders that short the market, that's when price changes. That's when you have the ability to have the, the best trades, the highest quality trades, which give you a low risk entry with high profit potential. Um, and understand when you go into retirement, especially there's three main things that, that you have to concentrate on. Number one is protection of what you have worked so hard for. Uh, what about an insurance policy on your portfolio? You can do that. Also, when you go into retirement, something is gone. Something is, is eliminated from your life and that's the income from your job. What are you going to do to replace that? Well, there are assets you can use. There is an asset that you can use both for protection and for that, uh, you know, that replacement, and then also to help grow your assets, and that's options. You can use options on your stock, and, and stock are really long-term. That's probably the best asset you can have to put together for your retirement, but you can utilize the options to make sure that that the profits from those, those uh, in equity positions stay with you, you can also use options to increase the profit potential that you have with those equities. And you can also use options 
uh, in different directions to, again, participate if the market is not going in your favor, if the market's sideways. You know, you you mentioned inflation. You mentioned we've talked about Warren Buffett a couple mm-hmm. of times. Warren Buffett right now it has $16 billion in cash that he is not willing to put into the market because he's not seeing what he feels are real values. Warren Buffett waits for the market to correct, to crash. Then he sees the values. Then he gets in. But that doesn't mean he's not participating now. Even though he has that $16 billion on the sidelines, when the market does go down, he's making money. And he does that using options. He, he will make probably $7, 8000000000 billion a year using options. It really doesn't matter to him if, if the value of some of the stocks that he owns goes down. He has an option that hedges that, that can eliminate or reduce the loss or maybe even make a profit on any downturn in the stocks that he has. Those are things you can use, and, and those are things that we talk about in these classes. Yeah, the you know what's happening right now with the financial markets, the stock market, it, it's, it's chugging along and it's doing really well for a lot of people. And there's still a lot of people, even though they're, they're, they're seeing record amounts of brokerage accounts opening up right now, right. there's still a lot of people still not participating. And it's, unfor- it's unfortunate because these are a great opportunity for people to utilize. But the great thing about that, Josh, with the people that aren't participating, is they are sitting on the sidelines with trillions of dollars of cash ready to come in the market. And a good, strong majority of them have already said they are willing to put their money into the market. So the potential, the opportunities coming down the road are phenomenal. Yeah, and what the, what's unfortunate too is when people, I mean, a lot of people are brand new to the, to the stock market. We get a mm-hmm. lot of people that come to these investing classes and they are new. They just don't know how to do it. And so they, you know what they do? They do nothing. Right. With, with learning how to do that and understanding what proper tools you need, Al, you still have to have a plan, right? Mm-hmm. So what do you think of the, a couple different... I guess a couple different things that you would need in a plan to get started. What, yeah. what are those real quick? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's what I was going to talk about. Uh, a plan really, the, the two primary components of it, number one is a timing strategy because it, as we said, the most important thing to do is identify the right price to get into anything, the right price to get out of it. And to be able to do that, you have to be able to time when the turning points take place. That's our core strategy for our students. That's the number one part of their plan. The second uh, primary part are the assets that you trade that are specific to achieving your goals. But one of the things that a plan does is it it controls your emotions. And uh, the emotions that you have as a human being are going to get in your way as a trader or investor. That's maybe the only thing that's guaranteed in the market. So those that's very important to control, which you do with a set of rules that should be part of that plan. If you have the proper plan, you should never have to ask, what do I do now? That plan, it, it really, you should, be, you should have already planned ahead. You should know what every outcome, potential outcome could be and how you're going to manage that outcome. Yeah, it's all about knowing where you're going to get into a position where you're going to get out, what's the proper asset to use, as Al is talking about, and then what are the proper tools and what are the proper rules. And Al, it's getting close to the end of the show, and, and with these investing classes that you teach here at the Academy, it just helps people, I guess, take action and and uh, mm-hmm. accountability. That's, that's what it's all about is being accountable for yourself, being accountable for your family, and whatever, whatever your objective is with the financial market, it doesn't matter. But you have to have a plan to do that. Al, I know you have a, some phenomenal words of wisdom today because you have some great wisdom. Let's hear them. Well, you know, have you ever dreamt about how you want things to be? You know, in other words, use your imagination to see things you would like to see in the future. To have a chance to make those a reality, are you willing to do something different? Or are you just going to accept whatever happens? You know, what you do today is going to determine your future. You're in control. You make the decisions. You know, it might take some effort, but if what you want is important enough, today, start. Take the first step. And remember, when you limit your imagination, you're going to limit the... the yeah, shit. And remember, when you limit your imagination, you risk limiting your future. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said you are in control. This is your time. Now is that time. Subscribe to the podcast. Also check out Investing with Confidence on YouTube. Same time, same place next week as always. Until then, retire young, my friends.